And now I want to go to, to the hysteria of Robert De Niro. As I said, he has every right to detest the president's policies. He has every right to express them as I do in any way I want about any subject. But when it reaches this level of pathology where he uses dirty words and he has such a visceral hatred for the president, there's something more at play. And I believe that that is deeply rooted in psychological damage that De Niro may have suffered as a child, along with a wish fulfillment fantasy that he had had a father like Donald Trump. And the same can be applied to the pathological insanity of the American left itself and their unhinged hatred for the president. And I asked earlier when I said, is there a psychologist out there or a psychiatrist who has some insight into this of why De Niro is so viscerally crazed about Donald Trump? My position is, is that he wishes that he had had a father like Donald Trump. That's what I think, because this is not a normal or even average angry level of protest. Chris on WABC, go ahead. What's on your mind? Hi, Dr. Savage. Thanks for taking my call. So I, I did um, want to call in and, and just speak a little bit about what I believe is what's called narcissistic personality disorder, which Robert De Niro uh, clearly exhibits signs and uh, symptoms of in regard to his inability to handle any type of criticism, his inflated sense of his own ego and his own self-worth, um, you know, and lots of actors subscribe to this. And are not subscribed. Yes, but De Niro is taking the lead in attacking the president in, a, in the most uh, uh, vicious way and on a repetitive basis to the point where you start to say what really is underneath all of this. Are you in the, in the, in the mental health professions by any chance? Yes, I am. I've been a mental health practitioner for 18 years in the state of New Jersey. As what? Psychologist? Psychologist, psychotherapist. Um, I have two licenses, one for substance abuse counseling and one for mental health. Uh, All right, so you deal with obsessive personalities. So I jump to shark on this, and I say in my non-professional analysis that De Niro appears to, be damaged, appears to have been damaged as a child and that he almost wishes he had had Donald Trump as a father. Is that a possible scenario, a, a psychological profile, rather? Given that De Niro actually was a high school dropout who went to acting classes... Um, oh, he never even went to college. No, he didn't. What he, De Niro did, I'm actually pretty familiar with his background. Um, and he, Well, then he'd be perfect to be a talk radio host. That he would fit right in. <laughs> yeah, well, man. All right, I, I couldn't. I couldn't resist get, getting that one in. But okay, so he went to acting school. But why the hatred for Trump? I believe the hatred for Trump is because there's nothing to me more dangerous than a person who has an antisocial personality disorder or not, or a wounded narcissist. And what I look at De Niro, I see a wounded narcissist because what Trump did as a narcissist himself, to be honest, yes, is not right. hit back. What De Niro is suffering from is 50 years of everyone telling him he's the most wonderful, gifted, amazing person, almost a messiah-like figure. And then here comes Donald Trump, and, you know, De Niro disagreed with him. I don't like him. His policies stink. But then all of a sudden, Trump attacked back. And what Trump has been doing to a lot of uh, his opponents, unlike what I've experienced in the past, is he's not sugarcoating anything. He's not a George Bush who will just, you know, come out and say the politically correct thing. Trump goes right after because he's wounded himself. So what does he do? He fights back, and that hits at the core of that disorder, which creates this rage and this like, visceral attempt to uh, exact revenge and exert dominance, which is really what De Niro is trying to do uh, in all of this. And he's not able to control himself or see the forest from the trees. That really what's happening is he is exposing his own flaws and his own mm. weaknesses uh, by taking that approach. All right, so that goes a little bit to my feeling or surmisal that there's some psychological damage that De Niro suffered as a child to do with his father and that he wished Donald, that he had had a father like Donald Trump. Don't you think there's a possibility they wish they had a strong father like Trump? Absolutely. I mean, to me, I look at, if, if, if De Niro was sitting on my couch, and I know that they all the analyze this joke might come out, but... <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Uh, yeah, so I'd be digging into... So how is it your parents allowed you to drop out of high school and travel by yourself to Manhattan five days a week to go to um, an, an acting school? Clearly you had to convince them. Clearly there's something 
But, but he grew up in the West Village, didn't he? Wasn't he a West Village inhabitant? Didn't he live in the village? Yeah, he was he was in New York. He's originally a New Yorker. He still traveled. He still had to take the train into whatever the acting school was. Um, it wasn't around the block for him, from my understanding. It could be wrong, but from what I remember reading, he traveled um, into his acting school, dropped out of high school. So I'd want to know, how is it that... But the, the, the ignorance of so many of these prominent actors is a reflection of their lack of any education, meaning knowledge. You know, it's easy to put down college education and say it's useless. However, it's not always useless, obviously. We'd have no trained physicians, no trained engineers, no trained pilots, no trained architects. I mean, do I have to go down the list? So education is extremely important, and it's not necessarily a waste unless you waste the time in there uh, by taking acting classes or sociology or something like that. But getting back to him, I see a father issue here. That's what I was getting at. And I want, have you ever delved into the father issue with this kind of rage? Yes, and then what ends up happening, because father issues are, are very, very powerful, especially for males. Um, and it's not often talked about um, amongst, you know, males who, who enter into therapy. He, if he had a father who was either overly dominant or overly submissive, it can create that kind of paradox where you kind of want the other side of what you got. So if his father was the type who would be, you know, a dominant, you know, overbearing type of person, of course... No, no, I, I don't know much about De Niro's father, but the little I've read says he was the opposite of that. He was absent in that regard. And he loved his father very much, but his father was a rather meek figure in his life. Now, that must tie into Donald Trump in some way, his hatred for Trump. Yeah, Trump, the, the Trump thing, and for me, Dr. Savage, it is very interesting because I would want to really sit down and figure that out. But what's clear is whatever that has is definitely, you know, solidified this narcissistic personality. And Trump is that, you know, he's almost that um, archetypal figure where he just triggers Robert De Niro. Um, and I'm sure a lot yeah, No, because this is a triggered situation. He's actually acting out a psychologically uh, mad person in a movie that's yet to be written. He's almost like a character in that thing with uh, Jerry Lewis. I don't know if you ever watched any of De Niro's early movies where he plays the nut who wants to get on a TV show and he uh, stalks a TV host and then he kidnaps him and ties him up. He's obsessed with this uh, TV host, so obsessed that it becomes his whole life. I think that Trump has probably become De Niro's entire life. And, and, you know, you could look at this and laugh at it and say he's gone from raging bull to raging fool. And uh, I think that works. But there's something here that's actually sick. And it could turn into something worse unless he is called out and said, Mr. De Niro, it's time to stop it. The whole world can see right through this. You've got to, for your own sake, stop this. We're not worried about Donald Trump being hurt by you, but you're hurting yourself. And I think he is hurting himself by shaming himself. But it's enough on that. I'll... Um, I want to thank you for calling the show, number one. And hold on, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, you're getting the quiz of the day. Okay. How are you going to listen to this show come January in New York? Seventh, I'll be on the podcast. You know? Oh, thank God, I have an educated listener. You know, you're the first caller from New York who knows all you got to do is go to michaelsavage.com and you'll get the same Michael Savage that you're getting now. You won't hear me on the air because uh, for whatever the reasons are, I don't want to go into them. I have my own belief system on that. But nevertheless, you'll be able to hear me because I'm not going anywhere. I'm going nowhere, but I'm going to be right here in front of the microphone. I thank you so much. I'm sending you a uh, Christmas gift. Stop Mass Hysteria, the best book of its time, back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Take one atom of nitrogen and bond it with one atom of oxygen. Boom, you just created nitric oxide, a miracle molecule your own body makes that fuels your cardiovascular health, keeping you vibrant. But as we all age, our bodies need help generating more natural nitric oxide. Super Beats by Human has harnessed the power of nutrient-enriched beets and created a superfood that helps your body make more nitric oxide on its own. The core philosophy of Human is to develop heart-healthy products for your body. 
One teaspoon of Super Beans Daily tends to support your cardiovascular health and blood pressure levels, giving you natural energy without the need of a quick caffeine kick or sugar high. We're talking real, healthful, natural energy. So call 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com and find out how you can get a free 30-day supply of Super Beats and free shipping with your first purchase. I want you to feel the 1 plus 1 equals boom effect of Super Beats. Just call 800-481-0504 or savagelovesbeats.com. Listen, we're getting lots of calls today, not about the caravan jumping the border fence, but about Robert De Niro's alleged uh, madness uh, and anger towards Trump and what it's based upon. I say there's a father issue there. And you know what's interesting to me, why people are calling on that and not on the border thing? Because there's nothing you can say about the border thing that we haven't heard 5,000 times. And, you know, one of the great things about talk radio is it gives you an opportunity to express ideas and maybe develop ideas and think about something and this issue of of the pathological madness of de niro towards trump and how it's escalating is 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 catching fire and i'm asking you what you think so david on wabc in new york what is your theory on why de niro's gone from raging bull to raging fool the problem with de niro is is that he tries to portray himself as being from a tough part of the low east side of manhattan as a tough guy family but in reality his father was a little bit finocchio he grew up in uh, kind of like in the gay section of uh, of uh, Lower Manhattan, which is the Greenwich Village. And the wait, wait, hold on. I didn't know any of that. Tell pe- I don't know what Finocchio means. You're saying what? Uh, it's an Italian expression, being a little Finocchio. It means that his father was basically in the closet, wasn't uh, portraying his personality the way it might have looked on the outside. Um, therefore, he didn't have the same... Uh, he didn't have that masculine uh, upbringing that he claimed. So I, I really didn't know that. So do you think this has something to do with why he resents Trump, because he wishes Trump was his father, or was like that his father was like Trump? Well, I, my experience with people in those situations is that they get jealous when they see a family that's a strong family and that is very successful and uh, they're, they're, they stick together. He doesn't have that situation. It's just a matter of jealousy. Plus, he's acting out. He's trying to cover up his path, his life. Is Robert De Niro personally a tough guy, or did he only play tough guys? He looks like he's a tough guy. No, he's a, he's he's probably about five foot four. <laughs> he's not a big guy. He tries to portray himself as that, but uh, anybody knows that that area that he comes from, not the low. He's, it's not the Italian section of the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Everybody knows that Greenwich Village is the was the artist colony and the gay colony of New York. Yeah, yeah, it was the sign of the uh, of the whole it was the beginning of the whole scene, the, the Stonewall, the revolution there and the bar there. Uh, are you from New York? Yes. Are you going to listen to me on the podcast in January when you can't hear Mike on the airwaves? Absolutely. I've already started. Thank God. See another one with a brain. Uh Stay on the line. I'm sending you stop mass hysteria. So I got two listeners from New York. That's good. That's good. Savage.